Yeah, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a career because uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing about the thing about it was a complete you know, passion and totally um, consumed my every you know every waking moment when I wasn't doing schoolwork. But when you back in the kind of 80s um if you were doing a sport that was kind of an olympic sport you know you were lucky to get a few hundred quid of an um, sports aid foundation grant there was no chance that you were ever going to be professional or be able to do what you did full time without you know great parental support so um so it, it was something that i did to a very high level and you know competed for great britain but um i always feel quite kind of i don't know fraudulent to call it a career <laughs> um <laughs> But it was it was what happened in sport, um, you know, especially women's sport. You know, the very few women could earn a living from doing sport in the 80s because um, there was no professional football. There was no professional um, leagues. There was no national lottery funding. There was no, yeah. um, you know, you'd, basically tennis and golf were the two places you could earn money if you were a woman. Yeah. What it, what inspired you or who inspired you as a young girl then? Because obviously you started in the, the gymnast arena and then it, you're, you developed your passion for football and moving into broadcasting from there. So yeah, I was that... sport and sport generally. I mean, I've always liked. Um, so in gymnastics, I had people that you've never heard of, you know, Eastern European gymnasts who I you know thought were amazing. And, and even a girl at my local club who was the first person to go to the Olympics with me gymnastics and a girl called Lorraine Priest and because she was so normal, you know, she was doing A level at a lead state school and she looked normal and she was and yet she was going to the olympics you know so she was kind of um a real kind of goddess you know when i was like 12 years old 